from the studios of Staten Island Community Television, you're watching In the Bleachers, the TV show for the world's most passionate sports fans. Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie Hickson. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Hector might be on the other line, correct? That's the way you introduce me? Uh, yeah. That's the way you're supposed to No, You're supposed to introduce me as the hardest no! man on cable access TV. Are we, go uh, we back to this time. again? You are none of you're those things. You're as a doornail. You know that, right? You, the, you are Jeez, none of those Jesus. things. Yeah, I don't understand. I am the hardest, baddest, oh, sexiest man on cable break. access you're TV. You're killing me. And that's how you're supposed to introduce me. That's all it you do. No. Because that's what I am. No, that's, that's what you're what not. I know I am. That's what you're not. That's what I know I am. No, and you, you know you're runs not. Through you like a running water. I but hate you. Speaking of jealousy, running I'm water, not that jealous you of are, you. And not introducing me properly. Do the Giants have a chance to make the playoffs? Not anymore. So they're dead as a doornail, losing 20-7. to 7. Someone set a record, at least, for them. Hmm. I wonder who it but was, though. the Giants, as we've spoken to you, as we've spoken before, is Gettleman finally gone? That is the big decision. Well, they're keeping this on the hush-hush. They probably won't address this thing until the end of the season, but in my eyes, Dave Gettleman has got to go. Second, second one, Daniel Jones. What about him? Does he stay or does he go? Does he stay or does he go? Well, yeah. Because he's had three no years, goes. including this there's one, no to try and – uh, show himself a little bit, but it's increasingly difficult to try and win games when you're only averaging, what, 16, 17 points a game as a team? You can't win games that way and, and expect to have your defense bail you out every single time because all I see are three and outs and more three and outs or the occasional turnover being made. If no, he's not. World. Well, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to repeat that again because we had a little muffling on your end. Oh, I'm sorry. If he's a, a little bit above average quarterback, right? Slightly. Then you're supposed to surround them with people that are that can help them out. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen did nothing has done nothing to surround him with people that can help him out to make him look better because that's what he probably needs. If you send him to probably another team, he may have a chance because they keep on saying that he, he's got the tools, but for some strange reason, it's probably just that team because mm -hmm. they don't have the weapons to do anything with him, even with Shaquan Barkley, when he plays. Yep. Fortunately, he's been able to play the last couple of games, but his numbers have been extremely minuscule. I think they're trying to protect him from further injury. So, and like you said, there's no quarterback coming up in the draft. No quarterbacks that I consider to be NFL ready anyway. Anytime soon, so... And Daniel Jones is not the greatest right now because it's not as if if you get a new GM, he's going to turn over everything because you got – the only good thing that you have is that if they get a new GM that knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. he's got two, two draft choices this year. One from Chicago and one – because of their record. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, you hope that they pick someone that knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That knows how to pick someone. 
Right. But then you have Dan Jones. You keep him or do you get rid of him? Will they get rid of Gettleman? And will they resize Juan Barkley, considering he's injured prone? Mm-hmm. And then what do you do with the rest of the team? How is their contract? Who are they keeping? Who are they getting rid of? What is their story cap right now? Because it bumps up from this year to two hundred six something uh two hundred something million. So I don't know what their salary cap is. Hmm. Uh, one second, Hector. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, it, it sounds like your uh, your end is a little bit muffled. No, oh, I'm sorry. I messed this up. Can you hear me better now? A little bit better, yeah. Uh, okay. As I said before, which is, it depends on the salary. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, you're muffled again. Would it be possible to have you uh, call from a landline? Uh-huh. Would it be possible for you to call from a landline? And unfortunately, no, I'm not I able to hear Hector at all this time. Line. Hold on. All right. No, this landline doesn't work. That's why. Oh, okay. When, then we're going to have to check, take our chances with your phone. Yeah. Anyway... Needless to say, that team has a lot of work to do in the offseason. As far as offensively, they need to get some weapons in the worst way because, quite frankly, none of this stuff is working properly. Defense, I don't really have a problem with because they actually have some guys, a couple of rookies that have done very well this season. In this case, I would say power positions on offense would have to do the trick. So, it's going to, it's, you mentioned before that there was uh, no uh, frontline quarterback that's available in the draft. There might be someone who could sneak in and maybe be a, a second round or a third round pick and be a steal for somebody. Kenny Pickett from Pittsburgh. He's already led them to uh, their first ACC championship, and now they're going to be playing in one of the New Year's Bowl games. Well, whatever the case may be, they're going to have to do something. Mm-hmm. Because as I said before, and that is you – the three qu- the three big question is is Gettleman stay or going? He has Two, to go. Do you keep Daniel Jones? And three, do you si- re- do you sign do you resign Daniel Jones? And do you resign Shaquan Barkley? And uh, well, f- t- I can the answer fourth that. question that you have is who do you have on the Jets that's worth keeping? And what's their salary cap on the like? Jets or the Giants? The Giants. Oh, okay. So far, that's what we're talking about. And as for the Jets, what can you say about them? They're a new team. They they're they got a new GM. Mm-hmm. I would assume. Yeah, they Joe got Douglas. a new coach, Robert Sala. And they got a new quarterback, which yeah, they're putting all their marbles in. And their salary cap was good. And this guy could have done a hell of, I think, a hell of a lot better. But he got mediocre players. He got players that can play. And Jets dumb luck because the majority of the players were hurt. Mm-hmm. All the people that they drafted, the majority of the people that they drafted, were hurt. Right. And they were out for the year in the beginning of the season. Think about it. 
all the big guns, all the big guns that they were supposed that were supposed to do something this year, wind up getting hurt. Yeah. So, the only thing you can do with the Jets is either get rid of the GM because he didn't know what to do with the salary cap. Because there were some good players, they just didn't want to pay for them. Now that the salary cap goes from whatever to whatever next year, they should be able to get better players. Mm -hmm. Now, who are they going to get next year? Who is that it guy that they'll get next year? Or will they be the same boring Jets all over again? Because they, do, if if from what I understand and from what I'm reading, their salary cap is still pretty good. That they should be able to do something next year. Because they only sign plays for I think one to three years, mm-hmm. with an option for a third on some of the players. Except for the young guys that they signed this year uh, from the draft last year. I mean, from the yeah, from the draft this year. Mm-hmm. What do you, th- I mean, this guy had it, he had the salary cap, he had the, he, as everybody was saying, he had the opportunity to build a team in his image so that he can do something and he wind up putting, just getting players that are stoppers. Mm-hmm. And as I said before, and I'll reiterate, the fact that the majority of the players that were drafted were hurt this year didn't help. Yeah. So where do you see the Giants and where do you see the Jets? Because they're both in a similar situation, even though the Giants have won more games. <laughs> Slightly and more. They, and and like I said, they got to get rid of Gettleman. What do you do with Daniel Jones? And what do you do with Jaquan Barkley? And then what's the Giants' salary cap like? And who do you keep on the Giants? And with the Jets, the same thing. Mm-hmm. Well, what you do with the Giants, first and foremost, get an offensive lineman. Because they're still having trouble... Uh, warding off pass rushers, uh, which turn into sacks. That's number one. Number two, get a playmaking wide receiver because Sterling Shepard is still on the medical report because of injury. And Evan Ingram has been in and out of injury, out of the lineup, I should say, because of injury. As, fo- as far as a quarterback is concerned... He's had three years, and all he's been able to do is uh, just dink and dunk several of his passes. And he still doesn't look like he's seeing the field well at all. But first but and foremost, Gettleman's get an offensive line. He didn't give him the tools. If, if you're, as I said before, if your quarterback is average, mm-hmm. a little bit above average, uh, uh, according to what they're saying, then you got to surround him with people. And Gettleman didn't do that. Yep. Not that the Giants didn't have their own problems with people getting hurt, but he really didn't surround them with anybody to do anything with. Mm -hmm. Let's say he didn't give them a front line, but did he give them anybody to throw, hand off, like a receiver or a tight end or another running back? Yeah, all of that. That's my whole point. Who did they do? Who did he surround Danny Jones with that he could have done all this with? And the answer is nobody. Because they're either hurt or, in, let's say, in the case of Shaquan Barkley, Either he doesn't want to go hard because of the injury that he had, or maybe it's a mental situation, because that's what it can be, too. You can play great in 
in practice, but when it comes to the game, you don't want to ruin yourself. Because you always have that thing in your head where if I go hard or I, is this my last game? Mm-hmm. Because of the injury that you had. So, again, you got that situation where where does Gettleman, do you fire Gettleman or, do you, or are you going to keep him? Do you keep Daniel Jones? Do you keep Shaquan Barkley or not? Or what do you do with the people, you know, it's up to the GM on who's going to come up next. I mean, like I said, they have two number one draft choices this year. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I think it's number eight and number five, let's say. Who are they going to draft? That's a good question. I'm not really sure. And who's up there that they that that's going to wow you? That's going to say, oh, yeah, they're ready to play. Just because you're in the top, I mean, when you're in the top ten and, and at least the top three, you're supposed to be ready made already. But mm-hmm. a lot of play, teams, um, a lot of players aren't, even though they're one through ten, supposed to be the best of the best. And a lot of a lot of players aren't. It takes them at least two at least two years to do something. So that being said, you tell me. All right, well, you asked about Saquon Barkley. I feel he should stay because I still think that he can really add a dimension to that offense that uh, very few running backs can. As far as Daniel Jones, I've seen the guy play for three years now, and he's done nothing but regress. Whether you take that as get rid of him or, or, or or something, use your own conclusions. As far as Dave Gettleman, I called for him to be fired a long time ago. Although he has made a, a couple of good, uh, couple of good picks for uh, for the defense. There's a rookie. There's several rookies on that defense that have been doing reasonably well this season. As for the Jets, I couldn't even begin to tell you where they should start. They have weaknesses on so many different levels. It's just unimaginable that that this team could still be this bad after 10 years, going on 11 years. First and foremost, they need an offensive lineman too because they need to do something to protect Zach Wilson. If Zach Wilson is going to be the guy for them, Protect his blind side and his strong side, too. I also think that they should get themselves a a franchise-wide receiver because, sorry, but uh, these guys that that are on the roster right now, they're just not doing it for me. Although Braxton Berrios is a pretty decent receiver and return man, So you can draw your own conclusions about that. No, I, I think you're correct in your summation, but again, who are you going to get that's out there? And is your GM going to get that team, considering, as I said before, he had the salary cap last year to be able to get players, and because they cost too much, he stated, I'm just going to get players that are good enough. Mm-hmm. Because some of them guys that were out there, they were asking for too much money. And since the Giants, since everybody has a salary cap, right? You know, I know they want to preserve the salary cap, they don't want to pay everybody, they don't want to pay a boatload some one guy and then go okay that's it and then you have to worry about the other players you don't want to put your your money in one basket but 
then when you're not able to get no one, mm-hmm. then you have a problem. Yep. Because the least you could have done is gotten better players than what you what you you got with that money. And somehow or another, he had a chance. This man had a chance to do it, and he wound up doing nothing. That's the thing. The salary cap was on his side. He had a boatload of money this last year and wound up doing nothing. Yeah. And like I said, even if you don't have the front line that you need, at least give him someone to throw to. Like you just said, give them those players that if you can't do one, you got to do with the other. Mm -hmm. Who were those players that he could have bought last year for this year's team? Who was out there? I mean, put it this way. Who's out there this year that's at the end of the contract? I'd have to look year. up the free agency list, and uh, that won't happen until maybe March. Fine. Then we'll say in March because you, you, you don't, you're going to have to check, check again what's going to happen with Gettleman with the Giants and the GM for the Jets. I the get the sneaking that, suspicion, though. The players though. that the Giants have. You're going to have to figure out who the Jets have, players that they have. I get the sneaking suspicion, though, Hector. Be. Huh? I get the sneaking suspicion that Joe Douglas is going to stay on with the Jets for next season, too. Besides, Joe Douglas was the one that hired Robert Sala to be the head coach, and I think both of those guys are going to be coming back next year. Besides, well, Robert sure. Sala just got okay. here. He's only had, what? 12 games? Who? The GM or the... Uh... The head coach. But again, how long has the GM be there, been there? Three or four years. Three or four years. And within those three or four years, you've hired how many coaches? Well, let's see. There was um, Adam Gase. Three? Three within that time, within that guy, within the GM's time frame? Mm hmm. Adam Gase and um, now Robert Sala. So that would be okay. two. Okay. If your GM hasn't done anything, well, first of all, the Jets coach that they had, I still, I still say the same thing. If Le'Veon Bell, whatever he did in the past, I think he could have been a big contributor if your head coach wanted him. But he didn't want him. And he didn't even want to play him. But Mm -hmm. even when he didn't want to play him, he still had 800 yards. Yeah. Which isn't great, but not terrible either. Right. But remember, the head coach didn't want him. Mm Mm-hmm. And he still wound up getting 800 yards. Imagine if you have a head coach that wanted to use him properly. Right. He could have gotten 1,000 yards. Okay, you paid a little bit too much for him. All right, fine. But you still didn't do anything to say, okay, well, we, we let him go. You got rid of him. And then you got rid of the head coach that didn't want him. And it took you three years to identify that this coach that you had, that you said, hey, this coach is my the coach for us. Now, he was, he was a, he was a, um, wasn't he a coach from, was that the GM's first coach? Adam Gase, yeah. Okay, so he's been there three years, you say, or four years? Three or four years. Okay. I think it's three years. And still done nothing, and you had a salary cap, and, th- and last year was supposed to be the year 
that he could have done something, and he wound up doing this. Now, again, <laughs> we go back to the injuries. He did draft some damn good ball players, but they got hurt. Yeah. You can't help them getting hurt. One got hurt in practice, though. I think the majority of them got hurt in practice. Mm-hmm. So, I, I don't know. You tell me. Where to get, Adam Gates again, gone where to begin? Year? Huh? Where to begin with this Is franchise? Is Adam Gates gone next year? What's that? Adam Gates. Is he gone next year? He's not there anymore. Robert Sala's the coach. No, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the GM. I think he returns next year. Oh, dear God. They just got to get a better scouting system. That's all. I mean, easier said than done, but all you, all you need is your GM one good. Is not on top of things. One good guy who has an eye for talent. To, to bend the general manager's ear and say, you know, I think this kid's going to be a real player. Maybe we should take a shot at him. I mean, like I said, he did draft good players this year. Mm -hmm. It's just that they were hurt. Yep. But when the free agency market opened up and all you all you put out there was Plugging. Did he really sign? What was their biggest name that he signed? Their biggest name? Yeah. Hmm. Darned if I know. Exactly. Now, do you understand where I'm coming from? If you can't even decide, if you can't even say, oh, the biggest name that the Jets had this year that they signed was. So and so, so that means they signed no one. I mean, the, the biggest name that they got overall, either draft or free agency, was Zach Wilson. Now, I'm talking about free agency. Forget the draft for the moment. Free agency. Mm hmm. Who did they draft that was the best of the best, not just a plug? -in? Hmm. Your guess is as good as is, is as good as mine. Thank you. That means they didn't sign no one. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He he had a boatload of money and he signed practically no one. Oh, he got someone from I think from the Forty ers and I think he's got he he signed players. Mm hmm. But he didn't sign the big free agent players. And you see other teams wheeling and dealing to get these franchise name players. Mm -hmm. And the Jets don't do that. Well, so you as tell you can me. See, they operate differently from the, from the Giants and if, all other but teams. But it happens every year with I these know. guys. I know. No matter who the GM is, and no matter what coach they have. Think about it. No matter who the GM is, no matter who the, who the coach is, they finally, they finally had the salary cap on their side, and they wind up doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And I'll constantly say it until they have to change him because he had the chance. He he got the the new coach. Well, how do you think he did? All in all, how did considering the what he was do? working with and all the injuries. Are you saying? Are you asking? How did the Jets head coach do? How did the head? Yes. How did the head coach of the Jets do? Even though with the injuries, 
and their record. Forget the record. How did he? How did he do overall? Even though he lost, but were there certain players that you seen played well for him? Did he make the correct plays? He just didn't do it. Is this coach any good? Is what I'm trying to say. I think he's a good uh, defensive coach. Uh, he, he's, he was he was benefited by a, a group of young players who uh, kept them in games this season. Otherwise, I mean, he could only do so much offensively. I mean, f- remember, he's got a rookie quarterback that he has to that he has to design plays for, and it has nobody. And he has nothing. After Around. Zach Wilson, not much. So this is why I blame the GM on this one. Mm-hmm. Can't blame the coach. In this situation, you blame the GM because you're throwing your hands up going, you had the salary cap and this is what you gave me. Mm-hmm. Now, again, you go back to the injuries and so on, but you can't help the injury. Yeah. Now, speaking of salary cap, and luxury tax. The New York Yankees. Hmm. They've done absolutely nothing. Well, technically, they're not allowed to do anything because there's oh, a yeah. lockout. Yeah, because the lockout now, and they were smart to do it now. Before the lockout, they, they basically did a couple of minor moves. I mean, for example, giving a guy a, a minor league contract. That's not really saying much. And Masahiro Tanaka? He's still pitching in Japan. Somebody, they, they would talk about bringing him back? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's going to be hard for him to return. And um, But I'm just saying, you don't know what their salary cap is like. Or should I say the luxury tax is like? You don't hear them really going after anybody. No. And when you do, it's always a big name that wants a big salary. Yeah. And... Then you have the Mets on the other side who did a great job this year. Yes, they did. They they, they had a they open up the purse and they wind up getting the guys. You know, the one the big surprise is the Max Scherzer one. That was stunning. For seeing that the Mets was sign stunning. Max Scherzer as they did, I think they because gave him a, a boatload of money. I'm, I'm not him to make even his talking way over here. about the money. I'm talking about the fact that this man did not want to play for the Yankees and didn't even want to come to the Eastern Division. And you throw you you throw a boatload of money at him, and all of a sudden he wants to play. I hope he doesn't come and say, "I always wanted to play for the New York Mets." <laughs> I don't think you're going to be hearing that from him. But let me tell you about um, who they did get. Eduardo Escobar, Max Scherzer, Mark Canna, Starling Marte, who's a, a really good defensive outfielder. I mean, the outfields are covered. Mm-hmm. You got an infielder that can play any position. Their infield is much stronger now. You've got... A pitcher, you've got two pitchers, and they're probably trying to sign another ace pitcher out there. Yeah. And they're probably going to go after a closer. Mm-hmm. So the next big thing is, who's your manager? And what and What am I hearing? Buck Walter. He would be perfect for the Mets. If they were a young team. If this, this is, is an older team, I don't know. He's got a reputation. But, hey, you got nothing to lose. Because mm-hmm. even the big names that they signed, 
they're signing for three years right. with an option for a fourth or an option for the, they sign them for two guaranteed years and an option for third. Mm -hmm. So they're signing for a lot of money, but the, the, a lot of money is coming up front. Yep. With an option later on. No more than four years. So that's great for the you know, for the GM side. Mm -hmm. For the player side, it all depends how old you are. Because I haven't seen I mean, if you notice you haven't heard a player sign for seven years anymore. They're trying to stop that. Yeah, although they, uh, I think there might have been one guy that I heard of that wound up getting a 10-year deal. I know, I, I'm as shocked as you are, but, well, that's the luxury of being a Major League Baseball player. You get all the security and all the cash that you desire. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's what happens. What's the difference between the Mets and the Yankees this year is uh -huh, about a hundred million dollars. That they, I mean, they signed Gary Sanchez to a Legends contract. Mm-hmm. See, I thought it was pretty good because. Uh... Because they got him on the cheap end. Yeah, they got him on the cheap. Plus, they want to be able to give him at least one more chance to ride himself. But they're concentrating on players. that They're trying to trade for players for first base. And the biggest thing, the biggest splash that they want to go after is shortstop. Mm-hmm. And before the lockout came out, it's as if they weren't trying. Well, I don't know if, if they weren't trying, but maybe they were dealing with guys that, looked, that wanted a little bit more money than their, than their uh, market is dictating. Again, if you want to win, you're going to have to open up and pay the price sometimes. Yeah, but at the same time, you don't want to give that kind of money to just anybody. If you sign them for three years or four, yeah, it's worth it. If you're going to sign them for seven years or eight, I mean, right now they had an article, and then you get to read it. Do you go after John Carlos Staten? Hmm. Even though Seattle is paying half his salary. You mean, Flo you mean uh, Florida? Because he yeah, came from Florida the is paying half his salary. Mm -hmm. So it's not like that you're paying all his salary. But if you're that messed up with his, with his cap, with his salary, you're messed up with the other guy's the other guys that you have salary, you're either gonna or you're, gonna, you're either going to have to open up your purses or hope that your minor league system you got people ready to to, to come up and have one or two bad years. Mm hmm Am I right on this? Am I right in what I'm saying, or am I wrong? Well, you're not totally wrong. I, I, I'm just thinking for a guy like Giancarlo Stanton and, and the contract that he has, I don't think anybody would want to touch him with a 10-foot pole. Right. And you can't, even though, like I said, Florida's paying half his salary. Mm -hmm. But you have him, what, for five more years left? I think so. All right. Then you have the other players that you signed, but their contracts are expiring next year or the year after. 
if that's the case, then you go for the big names now, and then you pay the luxury tax, mm-hmm. and then hope for the best that you're not going to sign those other guys next year. Because you're um, the lead closer. They're talking about his salary is big. And they're talking about a couple of other players that have big contracts. And I'm going... And then I'm hearing all the the trades that the Yankees want to go after and the players and, oh, this guy for first base. This guy got a good glove, but he can't hit. Yeah. There's always a catch with these guys. Or he's in decline. Oh, but then they want Carlos Correa. And I'm going, so do five other teams. Mm Mm-hmm. So now you now you're in a bidding war with them. Yeah. Instead of doing what the Mets did, go sign right away. They wanted this one particular guy or two particular people, and they didn't. They had the chance to get the players, and now they're stuck. Mm-hmm. Now they have to bid up other players. Yeah. I mean, other teams. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So now that put themselves, I mean, the Yankees put themselves in a situation where, what are they going to do? Well, first things first, see if they can get an all-star caliber shortstop, whether it's uh, whether it's someone out there who's what? a free agent. You need a shortstop, first baseman, yeah, and one outfielder. Preferably a center fielder. Right. And probably a third baseman. Probably a third baseman, yeah. I mean, nothing against um, Gio Urshela because he's played some really, really good baseball for them. But if the Yankees really want to contend next year, I mean, go farther than just the wild card round or the division series, they're going to have to get themselves a real all-star caliber third baseman. With the lockout now, which, you know, in some instances is better that they they had the season to be locked out now than before in the middle of the season. Mm-hmm. That was great. When, when, when they, remember, Major League, major league Baseball, Besides to go on lockout, they lost a lot of fans. Yeah. And it was that the year that they played two two times, where they started up again. I'm so not sure. Sh- before, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Where they said, okay, the guys that were in first place from the first half of the season. Then when the, when the season stopped, then they started all over again. And whoever was in first place in the second half of the season played the first team. Oh, that was 1981. Okay, so that, that was the myth then. That was 40 years ago. Right. All right, so I'm wrong. So it was last, what is it, 95 somewhere, the last base. The last baseball strike went from August of 94 till around April of 95. Yeah, they don't want that to happen, especially during the middle of the season. And from what I heard, this has a chance to be a really lengthy lockout. Now, I could imagine what their talks are like. Yeah, we want more money. I really, because what is it? The revenue, of, uh, I mean, the biggest ones, I think, are the revenue for TV. I would say helping older players. Mm-hmm. You know, in case 
they need rehab or some type of situation where they're penniless. Right. Help them out. Um, what else can you think of besides the revenue from the TV? A higher salary cap? Uh, I'm not really sure that the, the that the players want a salary cap. No, to be but quite a, honest a higher with you. luxury tax. I mean, luxury tax is the same thing as a salary cap. The only difference is that the the luxury tax you have to pay a lot, and that money is supposed to go to the other teams that are weaker than you. Mm-hmm. And how well has that worked out? Not so good. They have to do something. Well, because even in football, you had dynasties. The same players wanted to be on the same team always. Now they go where the money goes. Before, they were more loyalists. Mm -hmm. Same thing with baseball. You had more loyalists back then, I think, than you had anything else. Now it's wherever the money goes, which you can't blame them. But it's always the same damn team. So how do you fix that in baseball? Because some people have said, put a salary cap on there. (laughs) The players will never go for it, ever. But the salary cap is your luxury tax. What's the difference between a salary cap and a luxury tax, if you know? I don't know, about 30 or $40 million? I know, but what happens when you have a salary cap? When you have a salary that, cap, that means... You can't go over that cap. Yeah. When you have a salary no matter cap, what you can happens. only give a certain amount of money to a player. Oh, and also oh, yeah. there's the, the length of the contracts. not going to go for that. There's also the length of the contracts, though. In the NBA, they can go they, they can go no further than five years. How long would the owners consider their contracts with their players if they held a salary cap? Who knows? But I know that baseball is not going to go for it because. It, you know, I don't know how their salary and structure is when it comes to the money. How, well, how much revenue did they get and everything else? I don't know how much that is. Mm-hmm. Secondly, you have all these teams that are poorer. Yeah. And some of them don't even try to make an effort. Mm-hmm. You know, the first two years, they're great, and then afterwards, they have no money to resign these people. <laughs> yeah. See, so what does that tell you? What, what does that tell you? It means they're penny-pinching. That their luxury tax is not working and that you got a GM or an owner that's going, I'd rather spend the money on something else. Mm-hmm. And that's where baseball should go in there and say, are you spending – the amount of money on your team. Mm -hmm. There's no investigations or anything of that nature anymore. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, you have the Knicks and Knicks as well. Yep. Both of them are coming off uh, losses to the Phoenix Suns. You have Fournier and and what's his name? I keep forgetting this damn forward's name. You're talking about Julius Randle? Yeah, Julius Randle. Yeah, supposedly they got into a really heated argument on the sidelines. Or discussion, a really heated discussion because of whatever reason. They, they you know, men talk different and women sometimes when it comes to certain things and no matter how 
you know, no matter how we say it, we get it straight now. And even athletes have their own language. There's a hope that, but at least they worked it out. Now, what is happening? What is happening to the Knicks that they're going all of a sudden? Is it Tribidor's fault? Or is it the players' fault? Or are they are the Knicks still being the Knicks where when they time when it comes time to the fourth quarter, they're blowing it again? My humble opinion, it's definitely not the coach's fault. I think Because they were complaining. Mm-hmm. At some point, they were complaining about his play calling. Well, they may be complaining about his play calling, but they should probably look in the mirror at themselves. Not only that, but they're being scouted now. Teams are trying to catch up with each other as far as uh, the scouting department is concerned about, about the style of play. They're, they're discovering a, a certain things about the Knicks that, uh, that, that they're applying to their strategy. And also, is the new rules helping them or killing them? Especially, Julius Randles were complaining about the referee. Yeah, especially when it comes to foul calls. If you're the other guy, that means you're going to you're, you're gonna get the foul now. Just Don't. because you're stronger than the other guy. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, again, I've always said this, basketball is a non-contact sport, and it becomes WWE or, mm-hmm. or ROH when it was available or Impact Wrestling or MLW or whatever else wrestling organizations out there. Mm-hmm. So how did it become that? Basketball, non-contact sport. All of a sudden, it has become a contact sport. Mm-hmm. Where if you if you were strong, because even the strong players are complaining that if I'm stronger than one guy, the the calls that I used to get, I'm not getting pulled anymore. Or are the referees in the take mm-hmm. after after that one referee who was caught? Are there any more referees on the take? I'm pretty Bring sure the that they are. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, because you have, like I've said, is it, and Kimball Walker. Demoted to the bench. And they were talking about John Wall for Kimball Walker. (laughs) (laughs) One injured pro guy to another injured pro guy. I'll say thanks, but no thanks. And thank goodness they were smart enough to actually sign them to a reasonable contract. Where, you know, they're not losing anything. Mm -hmm. And, oh, and who got fired? What GM got fired? The guy from Portland wound up getting fired because of... uh some not-so-nice things that were going on in the front office. And what were those not-so-nice things? Verbally abusing staff. Verb, uh, sometimes it went down to the players as well. I think there might have been, and this is just speculation, I think there might have been a bit of a bias, if you know what I mean, on the GM's part. Oh, well, that, that always happens. Everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. But, and, and, and one of the Knicks GMs is up for that job? Yeah, supposedly, um, 
Scott, what's his name, is uh, drawing interest from the Trailblazers for the GM job. Look at that. Scott, uh, I think it was, it's uh, Scott Perry. Scott Perry. Look at that. <laughs> Scott Perry, the man who you disliked as well. I don't know what the they see job. in this guy because when he first took this job, he, he – he was doing things that really were making me scratch my head. But now, he can get away with it now because they were able to make the playoffs last year, but I don't think he's that great of a GM, to be honest with you. But I think you know Portland what is better off going someplace was, else. But you know what their mantra is for the first two years? We're not going to get all the broken-down players anymore. Because if you notice, how they drafted. Mm -hmm. And they stuck with the draft choices this year. They haven't gone out. You know, they haven't gotten, a, let's say, an Amari Stoudemire. Mm -hmm. They haven't done one of those, those uh, trades yet. Right. You know, they've stuck to their plan. We're going to stay a young team and we're going to wait it out and then hope for the best and expect the worst. Mm -hmm. And they've done well. The only guy I feel sorry for is Kevin Knox. But, <laughs> and he's 21 years old. Yeah. Like I said, the average, the average player on that team, I think, is what, 26? Somewhere right around there, yeah. 27, somewhere around there. The average age, because I know there's a couple of 22-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then they're talking about Damon Lillard, RJ, get rid of R.J. Barrett, and two other players to get Damon Lillard. And oh, I'm going, please. If he's that great, he better get you. He better get you to the championships. Uh, Damon Lillard is that great. He's a terrific player. He's he's also. Uh, he's also but something with, that a lot of players are not, and that's being ballsy. He has made more than thing. his fair share of game-winning shots. He's won playoff, he's won playoff series with game-winning shots, and he's downright terrific, both on but the break the and thing. in the perimeter. If here's the thing, if you get rid of the players that I think they're going to get rid of, and you get this one guy, you probably get another guy with him, but. Will he right away get you into the, the, the championship playoffs? Maybe he could get them to the conference semifinals, but not to a conference finals or an point. NBA if, finals. No. You see, is he that player? Is he uh, – here's how I'm going to say it. Well, is make it quick because we have a minute. Type player? Is he a Michael Jordan player? No, not even close. Well, then – What's so big about him? I would What's put so him. About um, him that, I would put him on the level of maybe three or four of your young guys for this one guy. I would put him on the level of maybe another Russell Westbrook. But then you still need other players. I know. And that's my whole point. Unless you mm -hmm. get two or three of these type of players. You're not going to do a damn thing. Well, look at the net. Unfortunately, we have to cut this short because we're running low on time. But we oh, can definitely I'm talk about sorry, this uh, over the course of the week. Yes, we'll talk next week. All right. For everyone here, I'm Jamie. I'm Hector. We hope to see you next week. Good night, everyone.